appreciate you to ask for me when you arrive. What is up, Hardcore Nation? It's Hardcore Christopher here, and sorry there was no video yesterday. Honestly, I couldn't think of anything to make a video on, so I just didn't make a video. But I thought this would make a good video. This is a Yu-Gi-Oh quiz, and I always like a challenge, so it says, Get 80% on this Yu-Gi-Oh quiz, or get sent to the shower, Shadow Realm. Oh joy! So, let's just get right. Yes, I understand. So, I understand that. Uh, so, wait. Um, sorry about that, my arrow... Wait, what's going on? Oh, this. Wait. Okay. So, as, so as we wait for the page to become responsive, not, this might be due to it's raining outside, but I do like Yugi, I do like that pose because it's like, he knows he has a hundred life points left and it's like, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna plot armor my way out of this. I summon Exodia. I said I top deck. So, let's begin. Everyone knows what's up when the Yu-Gi-Oh! theme song starts up when Yugi says, It's time to duel. This anime is one of the classics that always played on Saturday mornings. It was a, it was dark, riveting, and the hair on some of these characters were absolutely ridiculous. That, I, I do agree. All the kids in the early 2000s bought packs of trading cards to duel. Well, except for me. Actually, I didn't start my Yu-Gi-Oh craze until mid 2000s. Though nobody actually knew how to properly play because the game makes almost no sense. It makes more sense than it did back then. But even I didn't know how to play during during the 2000s. Well, the early 2000s, I'll put it like that. As time went on, Yu-Gi-Oh! still continued forward, creating spin-off after spin-off. Most kids grew out of the show either because they stopped in enjoying dubbed anim anime about card games, or they just thought that there were too many episodes of this show. You want too many episodes? Watch One Piece, an anime that never ends. Well, actually, I think the anime has ended, but the manga has not. Yes, Luffy still has not found One Piece after all these years. Um... Or they just thought that there were too many episodes of this show to try and keep up. With all the new series, the game, the plot, and the hair definitely makes... definitely gets more extreme. There are more master duelists who still keep in touch with the show and with the card game. It takes a lot of, ded of dedication to power through that much of anything, but there are devoted fans. This quiz, though, 
doesn't require anyone to reach the end of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Wait, are we talking the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, Zexel, Arc 5. Are, are you guys just gonna mix questions from all from all of the uh, series? Different series? Different spin-offs? I guess we'll find out. Um I can't control the press, Deputy Commissioner, but what I can do is But there are devoted fans. This quiz, though, doesn't require anyone to reach the end of the UPO series. This is about the classics, the Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, if I read a little bit further, I would have got my answer. That has a warm place in our hearts. So, what does it take to be the next, to be the king of games? Take this quiz to find out. Challenge accepted. Wait, what is his true name? It's not Yami Yuki. It's not Pharaoh. It's for sure not Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a Tim. The protagonist of this show is Yugi Moto, but it's also the spirit of the Millennium Puzzle that switches places with Yugi while he's dueling. Totally not cheating. Totally is. Yeah, for those of you that didn't know, uh, a Tim is just a big bad cheater. Has been ever since episode... One. I think. And nobody seems to ever notice that Yugi just got taller in an instant. Yeah, uh, how does that happen? Throughout the show, Yugi and his friends try to keep peace. Wait. Oh, try to help peace together the spirit's lost memories. He was once a pharaoh who ruled Egypt 3,000 years ago. He knows that much, but other details, like his name, are still lost. Okay. Yeah, I always wanted to know um, how people just... Oh, hey, that's exchange. Who created dual monsters? None of these. Allow me to explain. Even Maximilian Pegasus, who is... Which, by the way, that's the correct answer. Um, Max, even Maximilian Pegasus said in the second episode after he beat Kaiba. You know, where Yugi puts videotape into VCR and Yugi and and a Tim actually loses just because the time limit expired. Um, and then Maxima, the, then Pegasus took Solomon Moto, which that's Yugi's grandpa, um, gra Grandpa Soul, um, okay. But Maximil, but, but there is a line in that duel that Pegasus said, said, uh, well, what if I told you I didn't create this game? It was actually created by Egyptian pharaohs who played with 
stone tablets and magicians were actually able to channel their inner their magical energy to uh well to summon these monsters okay dual monsters is all the craze in this society what was once just a fun new card game has become so popular that decades past Duelist Kingdom and Battle City, people are going to school to play card games and are even able to get to get out of going to jail by winning a duel. You're talking about when you say beat trudge. Um that's just crazy. Yes, yes it is. As we find out later, dual monsters cards are based off of ancient Egyptian hi hieroglyphics hieroglyphs that the creator found on an expedition thousands of years ago. The Egyptians were playing their own version of dual monsters for for equally high stakes. Yeah, uh, if you lose, you die. What color is Septokaiba's hair in Season Zero? Um... Now, I haven't watched Season Zero, but I have seen what Kaiba looked like, and his hair was green. Believe it or not, he had green hair instead of brown. Which, Season Zero is extremely, extremely dark. The Pharaoh kill well, a Tim kills people. Well, okay. We all know about the Duel Monsters version of Yu-Gi-Oh! But did you know that there was a season before car before card games were the main focus? Only hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh! fans know about it since it was never aired in North America, since it wasn't even aired here in the West. Most people refer to it as Season Zero, or the Forbidden series, while the rest of Yu-Gi-Oh! can be edited to, fit, to be fit for kids, there was no possible way to do that for Season Zero. There may have been similar characters, but even their personalities are different. Season Zero also has way less card games, like way less. That I do. Oh, and duels were called punishment games. And if you lost, you died. How many defense points does the Dark Magician have? Um... He has 2,500 attack. I'm, I'm not gonna cheat. Uh, 21. Hey, I was right! The Dark Magician is one of the most powerful dual monster cards in the game. At least in the original run of Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm. 
Well, let's see. Blue Eyes outclasses it. Blue Eyes Ultimate outclasses it. Um, Five Headed Dragon outclasses it. Blackluster Soldier. Need I say more? And is also Yuki's favorite card. This was back in simpler times before things like pendulum summoning were a thing. Yes! And quite frankly, I actually quit the game after. I actually quit for a short. for, for a while. After Xyz, so I don't know how to pendulum or link. So, uh, and not every card has a super cool effect, special effect. Unless Yugi is plot armoring his way to a win, like he did against Duke Devlin. Um, at the at the original inception of the game, any card, no matter the attack points, could be summoned in a turn. Eventually, to even the playing field, a card with a an an attack of twenty five hundred, like the Dark Magician, would have to sacrifice two monsters, two, well, two other monsters before being summoned. That is true. What animal does Tristan turn into in the virtual world? So we're talking about the Noah Kaiba arc. So he also has a card in Duel Links. It's Acrobat Monkey, and he, and his line for summoning Acrobat Monkey is, this is what you turn into if you lose. Acrobat Monkey! So, it's a monkey. I'll be back. Before running the DNA, I had the ME check blood size old school, but Mercy Hospital has got the conference on file is O positive. All the DNA from Atlanta is from somebody AB. Just tell us call. Yep. Hey, Sarge. All right, this is methodical. It's ridiculous. This guy's a I know, it's not him. But it's still his car. Not to mention he's a pill push low life. Yeah, which means he probably blew his car to another low life and now he's covered. So go back in there. Alright, I'm back. Things weren't good for anyone when the gang were sent into Noah's virtual world, but it was especially bad for Tristan, since he is not good at dueling like the rest of his friends are. Well, Taya... Taya's not good either. Tristan is bad because he lied to Serenity. Um... He's worse than Joey. I think Taya is worse than he is, simply because the only reason why she won to begin with is because my my had Harpy's Feather Duster on the feet. She had Harpy's Feather Duster set, and she just. didn't activate it. She decided to pull out of the duel and give Yugi her star chips after Yugi had
after Yugi had lost to Kaiba after Kaiba threatened to commit suicide. Um, anyway, where did I leave off? Oh, we have seen him duel, maybe, like three times in a series of over 200, 250 episodes. And in one of those instances, he loses and then ha has his body taken over by a crusty old man only for his soul to be put in an animal robot thing. Nobody knows that it's their friend Tristan inside that weird animal body. What is not an Egyptian god card? So, let's see. Is it raw? Is it Obelisk? Is it Slifer? No! It's Exodia, the Forbidden One. Although, Exodia does... Exodia was the first monster to have an auto-win effect. You see, all you would have to do is get all five pieces in your hand and you win. Easier said than done. Considering that the considering that Exodia is limited and has all has always been limited. Because even Konami knew that they couldn't have Exodia at three. Based on powerful Egyptian ancient Egyptian monsters. The god cards were recreated into the into the dual monsters game, but turned out to be too powerful for most duelists to be able to wield even though the cards are just some some pieces of paper, the spirits of these monsters have taken over them only those who are strong enough can have the power and ability to use them in a duel. According to the prophecy, these cards are the only thing that can save the world from ruin. Well, well, you see, GX had their own version called the Sacred Beasts, Uriah, Haman, and... Um... Now, since you've been managing this case, I'm sure you've made several home visits. Have you found the baby? Oh, I'm, I'm missing one. But they brought up about... They brought about the destruction of... of GX at one point in time. Because of the Shadow Riders. What card does Yugi give to Rebecca? Unity, shining friendship, the tie is a friendship, symbol of friendship. Okay, we're talking about season four. Hospital security footage called Albert Beck. No record. EMT for red alert Abby left for four years. It's the not. It wasn't shining French. Was after the Metro North derailment last year. It wasn't. And after finishing his graveyard shift, he returned to Abby left to the garage you, an hour before the assault on Ryan Catalano. I think it was a simple. Ah! Oh! The ties of friendship. 
it was either it wasn't Unity or Shining, so it had to be either one, and I had a 50-50 shot. Because Shining Friendship is a monster. Yugi never used Unity. Actually, I don't think he ever had it. And now that I think about it, I don't think there's even a card that's, that's named the symbol of friendship. Just after Yugi's win. Wait, just after Yugi wins. Okay, that makes sense. The Duelist Kingdom Tournament. He gets a sudden challenge by a young girl who seems to be out for some revenge, even though he, he has no idea who she is. She challenges him to a duel, and we find out that her grandfather was an old friend of Yugi's grandpa. She's bitter that he had a treasured card from her grandfather. For all this, for all this time, thinking that Yugi's grandpa stole it, but it turns out not to be the case, in the end, Yugi gives her this card, and she becomes another one of Yugi's friends. That is true. What card does Joey win from Esperoba? Genzo. Battle City is the second big big tournament the dual crew has to go through. And this time there are some Instagram, Twitter. Well, my phone just died, so there's that. Um, the, the, okay. Some new rules. First, duelists have to sacrifice monsters in order to in order to summon higher level monsters. Joey learned mm, Joey learned that real fast. Which is fine. Second, the loser must give up their rarest card over to the over to the winner. The Annie Up rule. That makes the stakes way higher than Duelist Kingdom, forgetting the fact that lives were on the line during that tournament. Good thing for Joey is that he's winning the duels even against the cheating psychic Esperoba. How many Millennium items are there? Let's see. You have the Millennium Rod, or Millennium Key, Puzzle, I, Ring, Scale, Necklace. Seven! The Millennium Items are very important in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh, since it's in these items that the Pharaoh stored away all of the magic of the Shadow Games. Shadow Games are basically like dueling, but instead of just playing a card game, they would summon actual monsters to, to battle. That's absolutely not very safe. Well, that's obviously not very safe, excuse me. So it was a so it it was a good thing that the Pharaoh locked the mag that magic away. Now there are a 
good amount of people that are searching for these items so they can regain all that power for, for themselves. What kind of deck does my Valentine use? Harpy! Uh, my Valentine is one of the world's best duelists, always making it to the finals alongside Yugi and Joey. We, we, may, na no, we may never see her win many duels, but she is apparently good enough to be considered a pro, even when she makes it to the finals, though she loses pretty early on in the tournament, but that doesn't matter since it seems like she gets paid to duel during the off-season. There's an off season for dueling? To be such a good duelist, one must have a good deck, and hers does seem to pack a punch. What does Yugi use to win his duels? Well, it's cheating because he's top decking, obviously. But it's the heart of the cards. Next question. There's no denying that Yugi Moto is the king of games, but even for someone with as much skill as he does, Is it possible to win every duel that the way that he does? No! <laughs> it's almost like he does pretty poorly until the end, when he draws the exact card that he needs to win the match. Sometimes these cards are so powerful to the plot of that episode that we will only see it that one time. Statistically, it's almost impossible to win the way that he does, but he keeps doing it. What card is needed to summon the Black Magician of Chaos? You mean a very crappy ritual monster? Ritual, okay. Chaos form, we can, I, I can definitely rule that out. Because chaos form wasn't introduced until Dark Side of Dimensions. Ritual of Destruction, there is no such thing. Black Illusion, Black Illusion uh, Ritual is what you use to summon relinquished black magic ritual. When facing off against Pegasus, it seems as though Yugi's regular monsters weren't going to work too well. It was time for Yugi to pull the right card and summon this ritual monster, the Black Magician of Chaos, to really put a stop to all of Pegasus's madness. This magician is in the same class, same kind of family as the very well, very well known Dark Magician, but looks a lot more goth and has a headpiece that makes even less sense than the Dark Magicians. Since it's a ritual, it needs a special, it needs a special card to be 
able to to summon it. What is Bakura's favorite Bakura's favorite card? Not Dark Necrofear. Not Lady of Faith. Not Dark Magician Girl. If they're going off of the Yu-Gi-Oh episode, where they all pick their favorite card, Tristan chose Cyber Commander, Yugi chose Dark Magician, Taya chose Ma Magician of Faith, Joey chose Flame Swordsman, and... So what did Bakora choose? Bakora chose change of heart. Remember that episode in season one when Bakora challenges Yugi to a seemingly harmless duel where all their friends put their favorite card in their decks while they're all in a forest in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night, but then it's not harmless at all, and then Bakora turns evil, and it becomes a shadow game, so that everyone's favorite cards, when played, summoned one of Yugi's friends on the field, yeah, that episode was really weird, but we all learned which cards were everyone's favorites. What is Taya's original Japanese name? It is... The only reason why I know this is from watching a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! videos on YouTube. It's Anzu. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Like most, most other anime was created in Japan, so the characters originally had Japanese names. When the show came over to North America, 4Kids Entertainment changed the names and even edited out a lot of the violence in the show to try and market it for very young kids who are going to spend all of their birthday money on trading cards. They even localized it hard enough to, to try and call rice balls donuts. As if anyone would think that a rice ball could possibly look like a donut. That's the thing, they don't. <laughs> and I don't think that would work anyway. Uh, how many attack points does the Blue Eyes Ultimate Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon have? Sounds like communication with these other police departments needs to improve. If I may, with all due respect, problems are communication. Forty-five hundred. There's a national rape kit back Next, needs to be addressed. Kaiba is the guy that has all of the blue eyes in the world after destroying the one Yugi's grandpa had. And with those three prized monsters, he's able to summon the blue eyes ultimate dragon. It basically is a blue eyes, but with three heads, and it's a lot more powerful and impressive than a regular blue eyes. Out of all the dragons that Kaiba has in his deck, this this one is definitely 
the hardest one to defeat since it's just got such high attack a high attack what card does weevil sneak into joey's deck before their battles battle city duel parasite parasite Um, yeah, I'm, I'm done reading these little things. No, I'm not. Weevil Underwood is a sneaky little duelist, just by his name and look alone. Most people don't want to trust him. He's supposedly a good duelist, but he pretty much cheats anytime he can usually because he doesn't have a whole lot of skill to to beat the top duelists without bending the rules for example his strategy to beating yugi was to throw was to just throw all the exodia pieces into the ocean to beat joey a second time weevil knows he can't win unless he cheats. So he puts this card into his deck even with the advantage he still loses. How many locator cards does does a duelist need to reach the Battle City Finals? We felt certain it's not four, not five, not six. Oh, it was six. My bad. I thought it was seven. Oh, well. Um, for the Battle City Tournament, winning duels didn't only make you one of the best duelists, but it helped you obtain locator cards. Um, which would dis disclose the location of the final round. Duelists had to offer up at least one locator card for each duel, and when a duelist no longer had any cards, they were disqualified. All of the locator cards stacked together would make a map of the entire city and would point out the direct, the exact location of the finals on the map. Of course, nobody actually had to find all of all of them, or the show would would still be going on today. What is Joey's sister's name? I already answered this, and I had no idea this question was going to be a part of the quiz. But it's Serenity. We, we learn early on in the series that Joey has a little sister who was separated from him when their parents divorced. She has some sort of disease that has slowly taken her eyesight. The reason he got into dueling and tournaments in the first place is to win the prize money so that he can you fund a very expensive eye operation that will allow her to see to see once again then as soon as she can see she's she's dragged into the crazy situations Joey and his friends always get themselves into what Millennium item does Merrick possess? 
This is the Millennium Rod. Um, my vo my throat is actually getting really, really dry, so I'm just going to stop reading those little tidbits. Which duelist tempts Yugi to use the seal of Orikalkos? That would be Raphael. What is the fusion of Red Eyes Black Dragon and Summon Skull Cult? Red Skull Dragon, Red Eyed Skull Dragon, Summoned Black Dragon, Black Skull Dragon. Red Eyed. No! Oh well. What is the name of Pegasus' lost lover? Cecilia. What game does Duke Devlin create? Dungeon Dice Monsters, which didn't sell well compared to the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. What monster's spirit does Kasara carry? Well, considering that sh that Kasara was actually made into uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh card, she carries with her the blue eyes white dragon. Who builds a dual monsters theme park? Kaiba. What is the power of the Millennium Key? Unlocks the door. It unlocks the doors of one's mind. Who wrote Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, Kishimoto Oda Toyomi Takahashi If I didn't get those other two questions wrong, this, this, uh, this one, this question, I would more than likely get wrong. Um, it's not Kishimoto. I've never heard of this Oda deck. Akira Toriyama. I think that's the guy behind Naruto. I think it's Tosh. Wow! Okay. Um, what technique did Yugi use to defeat Pegasus? Well, Mind Crush he used. It was Mind Shuffle. <laughs> I mean, him and Yugi were just switching. We're, we're just switching back and forth. How does my Valentine pretend that she's psychic? Perfumed cards. Which duelist 
did not have their mind controlled by Merrick. Joey did, Taya did, and Keith did. But Cora did not. He, um, he released the control. He used, well, Rio Bakora used the power of the Millennium Ring to release the control that, release the control of Merrick and the Millennium Rod. Well, yeah, released Merrick's control over Band of Keith. And see your results. Well, let's see. I only got three wrong. As the king of games. Do I want to tweet? Do I want to share? Um, no, I'm not the bragging type. So I hope you, I hope you all learn something. I hope you all enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And as always, I'm Hardcore Christopher. Keep it hardcore, everyone.